Hello friends, let's talk about the menu. So I appreciated this movie a lot. I worked and I still work in the service industry and I had one job and I worked at this restaurant for nine years and it was more of like an upscale restaurant. And I was, while I was watching this movie, I was so triggered at all the people who were dining because the people that were dining were forms of people that I have waited on before. What I mean by that is like the older couple who have like way too much money and like they try to be nice, but they're kind of assholes anyway. <laughs> and then we have like the cringy, nasty businessmen, the famous guy with the assistant. And this, this, this is my favorite. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna admit this. Okay, so um, I personally loved <laughs> waiting on couples who like literally despised each other, like just were plotting each other's murders in their head. Like, oh my gosh, amazing, amazing. <laughs> All of them. Even the head chef uh, in the film reminds me of some of the chefs that I've worked for in my life and just how it is like by birthright that they are all psychopaths. <laughs> so if you don't know, the menu follows a young couple and a bunch of other people like the people that I just listed who are dining at a very expensive, very exclusive restaurant on an isolated island and a lot of shit goes down. Just like the food, this movie is a journey. And the head chef is played by Ray Fiennes, who I love Ray Fiennes so much as an actor. As an actor, I love him. I mean, he was in some of my favorite movies like Red Dragon, and he played Voldemort in Harry Potter. You guys know I love Harry Potter. But if you don't, now you do. And he was also in Made in Manhattan. <laughs> this man can do it all as an actor, and he played the shit out of chef. And then of course we have the beautiful, stunning, gorgeous Anya Taylor-Joy who I love watching. You know, I watched her in Last Night in Soho, didn't really like the movie, but I continued watching because I love her so much. And I also have to say, I loved her outfit in this film as well. I mean, I just want it. I want to wear what she was wearing. I want to dye my hair red so that I can look like Margot from the menu. I think my favorite part of the movie though was when the chef was talking about Taco Tuesday, which was a very ooh, story. But then when he presents the food to the diners and it's all of their like miscomings and misgivings printed out on these tortillas, like the older couple with the man who's cheating on his wife and the slimy businessmen who are creating fake invoices and ripping people off and stealing all of their money. Oh my God, and the critics, ugh, the critics. The critics were the most cringy to watch. Oh my gosh, they were so pretentious and so annoying. But like when he printed out all of their, the, the, the restaurants that they collaboratively shut down, amazing. Oh my gosh, and then of course the actor with the shitty movie, I loved it. It was so good, it was my favorite part of the whole movie. I could also tell like as I was watching it that the film was written and inspired by somebody who worked in the service industry before because the way that the chef was talking about how he had a day off and he spent it watching that shitty actor's movie and it like ruined his whole day off. I felt that, I felt that deep in my soul. Cause I remember when I would work at the restaurant full time and I would work like doubles, I would work doubles and I had maybe like one or two days off and I wanted to spend those days off eating good food and like watching a good movie. So like when the movie sucked, I was personally, felt personally attacked by the writers and the directors of the movie. And I was like, oh my gosh, my whole day, my one day off that I have a week was spent watching this shitty movie. So I felt that on a very deep level. Also, I think after initially watching the film, I didn't really like the ending, but as I started to like think about it more, I did like it. And the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, the chef, he could sense that Margot was not in the same like echelon as these really shitty rich people. She was, you know, a service, you know, service industry. Um, he felt this presence about her that he knew right away that she had worked in the industry before. And Marco, she was smart because what she did was, I mean, she did break into like his cabin, but she pulled his heartstrings and she was able to pinpoint exactly what made him want to be a chef in the first place, which was when he made cheeseburgers. You know, the film came in 
kind of soft and very pretty. And then of course the whole atmosphere completely changed when the sous chef like sliced his own throat in the middle of the dining room. And I just thought it was so cool because it kept building and building. And there was like this anxiety about like, oh my God, what's gonna happen next? Like all these people in this restaurant, they all know that they're gonna die, you know, at this point in the movie. Some people are still like, oh, it's a trick. And then of course, you know, the guy gets his finger cut off and they're like, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's real. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and that ending, when he basically makes them all into s'mores, I was laughing so hard at everybody in these like, <laughs> like the marshmallow suits and like the, like the chocolate hats. <laughs> Who knew such a decadent, beautiful, gooey little treat could be the end of so many shitty people at a restaurant. <laughs> and by shitty people, I mean the people that came to eat, you know, not the sous chef and the chef. Also, um, who else wanted to eat that burger at the end of the film? Because I know that I did, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, my stomach doesn't really do well with red meat, but um, I would sacrifice my stomach in order to eat that burger made by him. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, so not to get too psychological on you guys, but uh, as I was doing like my notes for this, Chef Slovic was an artist and he crafted and he spent time and he poured his blood, sweat and tears into making these super decadent, delicious, unique meals for his diners. And then over time, he realized that the people that he was making all this food for were essentially really shitty people, like shitheads. <laughs> who didn't treat anybody with respect, who thought they were better than everybody. He decided to like concoct this last menu for these people, these specific people that he has made food, you know, that he has made food for over the years. And he decided to put them all in one room and, you know, be really like passive aggressive towards them and also freak them out and essentially kill them. You know, he basically said, you know what? Fuck all of you guys for the way that you've treated me and the way that you treat my food. I'm gonna dress you up as a s'more and I'm gonna burn this motherfucker to the ground. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some of my favorite reviews on Letterboxd. And of course the top comment gets me every time. Ray Fiennes served in Anna Taylor Joy eight. <laughs> oh yes, I did forget to mention this part. Uh, one of the one of the reviewers said, can't even begin to tell you how furious I would be if I wasn't served bread at a restaurant. <laughs> So as I was telling you the beginning of the story, um, how I worked at a pretty fancy restaurant for a very long time, we didn't serve bread with anything. Um, so we would have people that come in and they would be like, oh, can I get some bread? And we'd be like, we don't serve bread. I mean, we serve bread, but like we don't throw it on the table, so. So it was funny. But yeah, n listen guys, I'm not in any way pretentious. I love me a good Olive Garden. I literally ate at Olive Garden like last week, so. Don't come for me. <laughs> um, what life in the service industry does to a motherfucker. Told you, I'm telling you guys, whoever, whoever was in charge of this script or whoever was in charge of any of this, they knew what they were doing because they worked in the industry before. <laughs> this comment's funny. By far the weirdest episode of Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> and of course the last one, which made me laugh very, very hard. Plot twist, cheeseburger. All right guys, thanks for watching if you did and I'll see you when I see ya. Bye.